Hello people, it's it's Hank. I did a top 10 list and I finished editing it and it was eight minutes long. So I had to cut three of the things out. So it was a top seven list, but I did edit the whole video. So right now I'm gonna show you the parts of the top 10 biggest epic fails of history or whatever I called it, uh, except it's the three that didn't fit in there longer than the rest of them and I think that they're fascinating. And so I figured I would upload them to this channel uh, since I had them anyway. So I hope that you enjoy. Uh, Hank out. Now let's talk a little bit about my favorite country, America. In 1930, we were on the brink of an economic collapse. People were very afraid that our country had spent way too much money and that we were in way too much debt. So everyone agreed that the best thing that we could do was to raise money by taxing other people. Not taxing Americans, but by taxing other people. So Smoot and Hawley created a tariff that was passed through Congress that would significantly tax a lot of imports. Now this worked pretty well at first. It raised some money for the government, but then everyone else in the world was like, well, screw you. If you're gonna raise tariffs, we're gonna raise tariffs too, and American exports dropped like 75%. And along with that 75% drop came what is known as the Great Depression. Now, nobody knows if the Smoot Hawley tariff is really the straw that broke the camel's back, but it's a great example of how everyone can agree on something that is, in fact, a really, really horrible idea, which is something that we should recognize when dealing with our own recession. Can you imagine? being the person who sent instructions to the $150 million Mars Climate Orbiter in pounds instead of newtons, thus dooming the craft to crash into the surface of Mars? Oh, you can't? You can't imagine failing that big? Well, that's because you haven't failed that big. And doesn't that feel nice? Okay, it's one thing to accidentally crash a $150 million science project. Here, here, I think, is something that's worse. This book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, was turned down by four or five publishers before it found a home. Can you imagine being one of those four or five publishers to have read the the beginning of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and said, uh, you know, that's, that's not, it's not for us. It's been done. It's old hack. There are too many books about wizard boys going to school. The real tragedy would have been if it had never gotten published at all. Yeah, we dodged a bullet on that one. And one final epic fail for you. Sometimes you got a kimono that is just really unlucky. And that's what happened in the 1650s. There was a beautiful kimono who was passed from girl to girl to girl and none of the girls ever got to wear it. They all died before reaching the age of whenever the heck you start putting on kimonos as a Japanese girl. But if and when you have that evil kimono and you really feel like burning that kimono, keep your eye on it because that is an unlucky kimono and you need to make sure that nothing unlucky happens when you destroy it. Like having the entire city of Tokyo burned down because you were a little bit careless in burning your evil kimono. Yes, in 1657, in Tokyo, a priest started a fire by burning an evil kimono that then burned down 60 to 70% of Tokyo and resulted in the deaths of 100,000 people or more. That was either a very evil kimono or a very stupid priest. Either way, epic fail.